All right, welcome in to this week's edition of Ignition. I'm Shades the Vibe. And this is Kelson. And, uh, well, Shades, I mean, I guess the big news to talk about is these Warner Brother Discovery upfronts, and we've got some big stuff happening, but they're not really releasing anything official yet. You know, I don't even know what time this starts tomorrow. It just says morning. Are you hearing anything? I, I haven't heard anything. Uh, of course, I don't really have any inside sources here, but uh, yeah, uh, it's sometimes Tony can keep things annoyingly close to the vest, which is hilarious because it's not like all this stuff hasn't leaked already, but I guess I don't know, but I, I'm excited for I guess the number now is like what was Wade Keller reporting something like 240 million a year. So it's more like 1.2 billion. Is that right? Am I hearing that right? what i've heard that's the last i've heard so that's about yeah. so every week that's almost like they'd start, have something like 4.8 million dollars a week for for aw to work with which has got to be more than the budget is now so uh i'll open it up to you guys what do you guys think like i said it's taking place at the theater at uh, madison square garden it says it's taking place in the morning no time uh there's do you think it's you know, any coincidence at all that this is happening at madison square garden well you know it's it's not an aw uh reveal it's a warner brothers discovery reveal so they're going to be talking about you know a lot of their stuff i mean so they, it's just a happy got, coincidence then okay that's it's nice CNT, it's tbs it's uh bleacher report it's cnn it's there's a lot of brands that Warner Brothers Discovery has. I hope I Tony Khan thought, refers to MSG tomorrow as the house AEW built. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. But I, I just think it's kind of weird that they didn't even come up. I, I've looked quite a bit. There's nothing on the time. I've looked at the dub, Warner Brothers Discovery Twitter. There's nothing about anything. The only thing that I can tell you is for sure is there's been multiple multiple reports because of the writer strike that Warner Brothers Discovery is not going to have any talent at the theater at Madison Square Garden there live. Anything's going to be, they will have, it sounds like satellite kind of things, but they don't want to have somebody actually like cross a picket line kind of thing out of respect for the writers and out of respect for the talent. So that not only goes maybe pretty for decent of them. AEW, but it has to do with, you know, like, somebody who stars in a TNT drama or TBS. Right. All the script of television for Warner yeah, is. Scripted. Although maybe, you know, I did see a report that uh, they were saying that the announcement of CM Punk uh, returning would be made in the next few days. So that doesn't sound like that will even be set tomorrow unless they were just. They're not know, doing that at an upfront. That's just my take. Like they're not doing that. They're yeah. going to do that on television at, during a live yeah. event. Well, you know, it just depends. Uh, Wolf, what are you hearing on this? Well, let's let's go think? ahead and introduce our panel. Uh, first, we've got Wolf. So go ahead and say hello, Wolf. Hello. And we've got Shane. Say hello, Shane, please. Oh, I, I apologize. I don't know how to use the mute button today. What's up? All right. And we've got Hulk and Brent. Hello. All right, Wolf, go ahead and give us your take on the upfronts. Okay, so I haven't heard anything different than what you guys, you actually have more information than I did. Um, the big thing for me on this is if there's a streaming deal involved. Um, because personally, I'm, I'm excited for the Saturday show because obviously, I, I mean, I won't say obviously, but it's, it's, you know, all signs are pointing that they're going to also announce a Saturday show along with this major uh, announcement with, with um, Water Discovery. But for me personally, I don't, you know, Saturdays are a tough day. I'm with my family. So if we can get some type of streaming on HBO Max for these, for the shows, it doesn't, you know, could even be a delay that that's going to be a major win for me. Um, I also heard like conflicting reports in regards to the money in the years. I think Brian Alvarez reported something like 300 million for three years, which is a good chunk of change. I mean, they're getting 40 million, I think, I think now um each year so that's it's, it's a joke you know. compared like to what they're getting now whatever they sign is going to be just a complete massive yeah. upgrade from what they're getting now yeah yeah but now keller's going on and saying five years which is like 1.2 billion I, I i can't fathom that type of money so like what's the, for me it's like 
what's the difference between 900 million and 1.5 billion or 1.2 billion? But, uh, uh, I bet you Tony Khan could tell you. Uh, shame. I'm how, sure what, a lot of people can. What, what's your what's your take on all this? Well, Tony Khan's family uh, combined is worth about nine billion dollars. This is a uh, pocket change for them. Uh, not to mention that uh, AW's been a self-contained apparatus for the net- network. Tony Khan floats most of the bills, so well, they've already leaked most of this. Shades, you already called it. Uh, what we really need to see in all of this, and uh, just to expand on Wolf's thought, is a streaming service, and it would make more sense to have that streaming service available on the weekly every uh, Wednesday and Saturday. But I also want to go out on a limb and say, if you have Hulu Live, you already have access to the complete back catalog. Where, What are we doing with the complete back catalog? Darks, house shows, pay-per-views? Is this going to, going to be readily available to anyone that subscribes to, to any subscription service, is, if that's the route they're going to take? Or are we going to keep having to log into crappy Bleacher Report to watch our backlog Please for those of God. us? God. God, dear God, no. <laughs> it's horrible. It works better on my cell phone than it does on my Roku TV. But I, I'm just saying, well, um, I'm sure we'll hear about all of this. Is We're not looking at something huge tomorrow for AEW. This is a gigantic press release, right? Um, there's a lot of lines that can't be crossed because of what's going on in the media with the Writers Guild and any lawsuits pending towards any mergers that they're trying to block out. The F- the F- uh, the FCC or the FCDC is going to uh, have to review everything before it goes into play. So this is just all talk tomorrow until it's all official through the courts and on paper. So we'll see. Brent, what are your thoughts on AEW getting a new TV deal and more money oh, and well, all that well, stuff? I, I read the other day, this is mostly just for their, their TV deal re-up because it was going to be up this month anyways. So then they probably were like, hey, how about another show? We like your rating. But because I read a thing that said that's not even including what they possibly could add to the Mac service, as in the streaming of who knows. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there. And it's some of it's not. uh, I I just don't know. So I think we're going to have to really just wait and see what the final terms of the deal are, if they're even released. Um, they certainly won't be released until after the deal is signed. And so I don't know if the deal has been signed yet. I think you guys talked about the streaming service. And I just want to touch on one more quick point on that. I, I think it being on HBO Max is a big deal it, because HBO Max, for my money, is the best streaming service in terms of quality, okay. in terms of stability, in terms of all, the, all of what you could want. It's, I'd like, I would rather have HBO Max than Netflix, pal. Like, honestly, at this point, because it's just a better app and it's a better experience. So, Kelson, what were you going to say? I was going to say HBO Max is nice, but it's, you know, it's going away on May 23rd. So uh, it's just it's going to be rebranded. It's the dumbest rebrand. Well, it isn't because you've got uh, what I'm hearing uh, specifically. uh, And, of course, I touched on some of this last week on Ignition. And of course, tomorrow night we're going to be, we'll know. So we're going to talk about a lot of this tomorrow night. But I'm hearing, uh, like specifically for All In and then All Out, uh, they're saying that All In is going to be on Max and All Out will then be on Bleacher Report, which is a Warner Brothers Discovery property. So unfortunately, I don't think Bleacher Report is going to go anywhere. But I will give a very quick tip uh, for Shane and anybody else who uses. Bleacher Report on Roku or Fire TV or Apple TV. Uh, If you have trouble, you know, starting the show, keep your password, username and password handy. Delete the app after you buy it. Restart the app and you will be able to get into the show right away. Crazy that that is that that's the links you have to go to. Make sure your app's up to date. (laughs) Yeah, make sure the app's up to date as well. So, uh, Shades, like I said, we're going to talk about this again tomorrow night, but there's something that I wanted to bring up that a lot of people in the community have been talking about, and that's AW Fight Forever. And Shane Ooh. works in the gaming industry, and he uh, has offered to share whatever kind of No details. We're not going to add any sources here, but go ahead, Shane. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Sorry, Kelsey. Already say what he, what he can, and he won't say what he can't. So go ahead, Shane. What do you got for us, bud? Air. Okay, I work actually for uh, two separate video game companies. One is a major retailer. I'm not going to 
we it's a game start and then the other one is another uh company that uh produces consoles and video game systems uh make it really quick uh most of you guys saw everything that was laid out uh today uh, drain maker uh dropped it first on twitter a lot of people were posting that their aew fight forever uh prepaid uh pre-orders on xbox live started uh pre-downloading today without them ever expecting that to happen so usually when a game is being preloaded onto a console it's within 30 days of the game being released so i reached out to my microsoft uh rep representative from uh, the east coast area and um, all he alluded to was yes they have given us a definitive release date yes the preload is happening for that reason they uh, if you were to preload the game you have complete access to the entire uh trophy uh the the trophy uh layout and system for the game so all that stuff has already been leaked online so my if i were to guess if i were guessing man i'd say if not tomorrow within the next seven days we'll get an official release on the game i wouldn't say that it, it's going to be coming out like tomorrow that that would be like really quick. The shadow drop games happen, but uh, with my experience as a retailer uh, manager, we don't have any physical copies at the store. So uh, I'll just say go go off and say that's not go off off on a limb and say that's not happening. But I would expect the game in a month, folks. Uh, if not double or nothing within a week or two after that. So now one other thing I want to add to the game is the game has been completed for a year. They recorded the last vocal tracks for the uh, game last year in April. The updates that they've made to the game were adding post DLC uh, characters within the three month structure that they wanted to do it. Now what they're talking about is expanding on the game beyond that, because obviously uh, playing the game now uh, is playing the game, uh, playing the game a year ago, right? So uh, th that's something exciting that they've been developing in tandem, but uh, we won't have any information on that, you know, immediately. We're talking, if we're talking characters, we're talking FTR who had WWE licensing. We're talking guys uh, that the uh, Adam Cole, all those guys are already playable characters in the game, but e expanding on that part of the universe that we're going to see some DLCs that were of uh, characters that weren't involved with the original release in the roster on launch. So that's a cool, that's a cool little tidbit. So, um, uh, the, no news from the Sony side, no news from the Nintendo side. The big leak came from Xbox data miners are trying to dive dive into the game and, uh, to see what the official release date is. But I have a sneaking suspicion. We might hear about that again tomorrow, if not tomorrow, the next week. That's all I got. It's really hard Thanks. for me to believe that Sony would be tight lipped about something. Yeah, Sar uh, sarcasm. You, I'm sorry. I'm being very uh, facetious. Yeah, the, the, I have problems with Sony. I don't like Sony very much, but that's a so that's a different podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wolf, you're a big gamer. Uh, talk to me about this from your perspective. Um, I'm you know I'm I'm antsy just like everybody else. You know, been antsy for over a year now. Um, you know, I kind of I, I've been kind of reading on Twitter too. I saw the Drain Makers tweet and. It does seem that way. So I don't have any insight other than just being excited for playing the game. I think it's pretty cool that the DLC characters, you know, just learning this now are probably going to be released on launch because there is just something not right about playing Fight Forever and not being able to tag team as FTR. So that's a cool tidbit. Brent, are you going to pick up Fight Forever? Uh, well, I have Game Pass Ultimate, so that'll be free to play. Oh, you like, when dirty launches. dog, you. And Wait that's probably why it it started preloading on some people's, right? No. It's mic Microsoft. Just I, accident. They do this all the time, I think, with some stuff. Under <laughs> no Usually up. when it's on Game Pass. Under usually no on game pass, usually when those preload, they're with out within the next week or fourteen days. Well, usually. I think I think Shane has a uh, is going to speak to your points. So what were you trying to say there, Shane? Uh, well, I do want to say, uh, Brent, I love you to death. Under no other circumstance would I ever unmute to correct someone. Um, <laughs> never, 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 never. I th th this is a very structured podcast. Well, um, game yeah. Pass anymore. <laughs> yeah, I like to. I, I want to play by the rules of the channel. All I'm going to say is that. A reporting of it being on Game Pass was misappropriated, and that was reported about a month and a half, two months ago. Um, the the preload is for the people that prepaid for the game on Xbox, their live service. 
and paid for the game completely and then opted in for the preload when the game was available. Let me ask this question. Oh, okay, you're talking about the preload, yeah. Okay. How do we feel about this being a game, sort of game as a service versus what WWE does with their 2K series and releasing a new title every year? Do you, do you want me to answer that question? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you can start. I played 14 minutes minutes of this game last year. I will tell you, this is not intended to be a live service game. This is Uke's first foray into a game outside of the WWE universe. It's structured to be an old school wrestling game. Uh, I will tell you, uh, and let me be plain, um, and I can talk about this part of it. When I played the demo, there were four playable characters. Uh, it played very reminiscent of WrestleMania 2000, No Mercy, the old PS1 SmackDown game. Awesome, right? But a little more streamlined, faster, higher frame rate, better graphics. Um, one thing I will say about the game, it was an imperfect product at the time. Hit detection issues, hit detection with issues with the, uh, with the uh, weapon system, uh, which I'm sure they've had plenty of time to fix, but they're not looking into it being a live service game. They want this to be a one shot to see how it works. And then they're going to build upon it and then plan on releasing other games down the road if this one is successful. So, okay, you know, well, that's uh, sort of something new. I hadn't really, I, my understanding was that it was going to be, there was going to be this never ending stream of DLC. It was going to be something that they updated all the time. But you're telling me that this, they're going to be more titles coming. Well, I, potentially. I can't say there's, yeah, potentially, but we have to see. I mean, but the they game, don't intend so, this game to be a five, six, seven year product, is what you're telling me. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, it took two years to get out. The game's already a dated product. Uh, okay. That it would be asinine to imagine that they are going to just settle on this. They are going to have to get the market feedback after the game comes out, and then uh, what game engine is it made there. in? Uh, I believe it's I, I believe it's Unreal Four. Ugh. Unreal Four. Oh, that hurts so, my heart so bad right there. Um, yeah. We got to get on Unreal Five. <laughs> oh man, that that's a that's a, that man that Unreal Five just came out like a year ago. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know. Yeah. I'm not saying that they need to do this game on Unreal Five. I'm just saying we need a real good wrestling game on Unreal Five. So, um, well, well, let's move away from the video games though, because we got some other more prescient AEW content to talk about, and one of those people is someone who uh, I think Kelson wanted to talk about, and that is the meteoric rise, seemingly, of uh, one Miss Julia Hart. I mean, yeah, I mean, Shades, we, we made a uh, post on the AEW Fan Hub Twitter account, and it is about Julia Hart and specifically asking, what's next for Julia Hart? And boy, did that tweet, t that is our, by far our biggest tweet. It's the most series. successful tweet we've ever had, period. Yeah, Probably combined I, uh, with all of our other tweets, honestly. I mean, we talk about a lot of stuff, but frankly speaking, the fans on Twitter, at least, they want to know about Julia Hart. It's frankly kind of weird. We were talking about this, and, you know, Doom Guy does his MMR rankings, and after beating Anna J last week, the MMR rankings are. Jamie Hayter at number one. Jade Cargill is the number two ranked women's wrestler on in AEW. Julia Hart is ranked third. Now, I am not going to sit here and say that Julia Hart is ready or even viable for a, uh, a woman's championship title run. Um, although... I mean, she's definitely trending in the right direction. And, you know, kudos to her and kudos to everybody that's working with her. Uh, but she's primed right now. Realistically, I do believe this wholeheartedly, that she's primed to take that TBS title off of Jade Cargill, or at the very least, win the Owen Hart Cup. I mean, you, you know, you, you got to have a heart in Calgary, right? Yeah, so. I, that's kind of my thinking. I, I want to talk about that. I think Julia is a good opportunity for AEW to show us if they've learned from their mistakes with Wardlow. Because if you remember, Wardlow was hot. He was getting big reactions. He was on a big winning streak. And they've really flubbed his character. And he's only just they've had to put Arn Anderson with him to try to get this thing right. Julia is getting hot. 
She's she, the, the conversations around here are starting to amp up. People want to see her. What are they going to do? Are they going to throw cold to water on her like they did Wardlow? Now, there were some extenuating circumstances with MJF kind of doing his little deal. And I don't think that helped Wardlow any. Let's just be honest. We love MJF here, but his little stunt last year did not help Wardlow's push at all. So. Yeah, what, you uh, know, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, you know, you brought up Wardlow, but I think you could also, I think it would be fair to bring up Jade Cargo in this too. Now, Jade has, here's the difference between what they did with Jade Cargill and Julia Hart, because Julia Hart right now is in a better place than Jade Cargill was when she started her championship run. But, um, how do I put this? Jade Cargill is a victim of her own success you know, of her own success. I mean, she's got, she was learning on the job with the title. And now, you know, you see people saying, you know, and I believe rightfully so that not Jade in her, in and of herself is boring, but the TBS title is boring. I think that's a fair statement. They didn't do Jade any favors by putting a new, a new belt on someone who was still learning how to wrestle. Well, then again, but they're still not doing her any favors because, I mean, let's look at it. She's squashing she jobbers. Won. She's back to squashing jobbers again. Like what? She had a good run after she won the championship. Once she she had a you know it's hard to believe, but right after she won the TBS title, she did some really good one on one matches against some. Did she fight uh, Layla Hirsch? I want to feel like at one point that was a pretty good she, match. I think I remember that. It was it was before the title run, um, but the po- the point I was going to make was, you know, Jade right now. Other than Taya Valkyrie, the last five women that she's faced had no wins in AEW when she faced them. Yep. So faced them. So she's been doing jobbers, and let's face it. The last pay-per-view, she didn't have a match. She doesn't have one. We assume that it's going to be Taya Valkyrie, but it's not been announced yet. And tomorrow night, even if it's announced tomorrow night, it's 11 days before the pay-per-view. Yeah. And that's one of my biggest gripes with AEW. And they I don't still care what want AEW. to put Jade in the program, and I don't know why. Like That program oh. with Taya was actually going in a good place. And then they put this stupid stipulation in and I'm like, I guess they're protecting Jade here. Um, so, um, like I don't, I don't think I'm looking at Julia and let's be honest. Julia has also beaten quite a few jobbers. All right. On dark. However, the thing they're doing right with Julia that they have not done with Anna J is number one, they've put Julia with talent that are already over. So you mean the house of black? Yes, exactly. And that's absolute Rollins. Who's just joined us. Thank you for joining us. It's a new, we have a new face with us tonight. So thank you for being here. Um, thank you for having me on. She's with the house of black. That was great. Right. She gets that rub immediately. And then they've built her up and now she's beaten Anna Jane, this program legit, no help, nothing like she beat her with the mist once. And then she just beat her. So now Julia looks pretty good, right? Julia looks like she's on the move. She's moving up. She's beating established talent. So I think the Owen Hart Cup is will be a next good step for her because those are wrestlers that this year, there's no excuse. Everyone in that Owen Hart Cup should be under contract to AEW. Everyone in that Owen Hart Cup should be on this roster and someone that we can recognize easily. And Julia needs to beat every one of them. And win in Calgary. And then it's to the moon. Uh, Rollins, you seem to want to chime in on this. So why don't you give us your take on Julia Hart and kind of where she's going right now. So it's not so much Julia Hart, but Jade Cargill. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not enjoy the Taya Valkyrie program at all. Um, It's become clear that she was meant to drop that title to Chris Statlander. 
because now like it that title has just become meaningless and it's almost become irrelevant. It's almost as bad as the 24 seven championship in the WWE. If I'm being honest with you, but in can't terms argue. of, huh? So I can't argue with you there. And it's unfortunate because you have talented girls in this division. You know, you were just talking about Anna J and Julia Hart. Granted, they're both kind of heels. Although I'm not really sure if Julia Hart is a defense. There's no way on this planet Julia Hart's a heel. <laughs> People are cheering for her. They love her. Now they might be. She yeah. might be trying to be a heel, but she's not going to get over as a heel. People are like her the, too much. The only reason I'm like questioning if she's a heel or not is because I'm not sure what House of Black is. Nobody like, is. Are they, are they meant to be heels? Are they meant to be faces? What are they? I think they're meant to be what they are, and that's House of Black. And then you can cheer them, or you can boo them, or you can do whatever you want. But they're just okay. going to be House of Black. And I love. Pro- uh, go is ahead, it a Kelsey. Promo, then? In a promo that Julia Hart did on Dark Elevation a few months ago, uh, she was. It was just her, and it was great. Uh, she rhetorically asked, as, answered the question, "Why is the House of Black so evil?" And her answer was this. Who said anything about being evil? We're just a group of people that enjoy violence. And she then further went on to say that good people can do bad things and bad people can do good things. And that's what the House of Black is about. Exactly. So they're basically tweeners then. If you want to put them into a category, that's fine. But I, I sort of think they defy categorization. That's sort of my opinion. Shane, what do you think? Babes, I agree with you. They def- they def- uh, defy categorization, but I also agree with Rollins. I believe that the TNT title was intended for Chris Statlander. I think she got snubbed because of her ACL tear, which is terrible, and I hope she comes back soon, and I hope that she brings some relevance to the title when she eventually takes it. I think that Julia Hart is still in a developmental stage as much as I love to see her on television, as much as I like to see her win. I think that bun needs a little more time in the oven in spite of the fact that she is absolutely soaring to the roof. She needs just as much as improvement as some of the other yell- younger talent that we see on TV during the week. That's my hot take. Okay, yeah. well, if she could get that improvement. Uh, Wolf, what would you think about maybe uh, the Owen Hart Cup, the kind of talent she would be in there with, I think would be a good sort of even keel for her because it's going to be like a king of the ring type thing to help establish and get more younger and more mid card talent over. But also, and here's another option I want to throw to you Wolf and see what you think. How would you feel about Julia having to run in ring of honor and going after Athena? Um, going to, back to the Owen Hart cup. I think it's a, you know, like we've discussed in the past, you know, it, last year was great because it put the tournament over. You had Adam Cole, Britt Baker win it. So now the tournament looks prestigious. Now you can use the tournament to build the next superstar. Hate to use the term, but you know what I mean. So I think this is the perfect opportune time to push Julia Hart as the um, as the female winner of the Owen Hart Cup. Uh, The Ring of Honor thing, I I would be okay for it. Listen, it all comes down to this. It always boils down to this with me. You have to make it interesting. Same problem with Jade. You know, she's she's uninteresting. You know, she's she's a phenomenal presence. You know, she's marketable. She's she's awesome to look at. She's pretty stellar in the ring. You know, she she's gotten a much, much better. But you have to give them something that they can actually sink their teeth into. You can't just have somebody jump another person to call it a story. You have to give us a reason why to care. And that's that applies to Julia, too. I mean, she's got an awesome character. But if you're not going to do anything with it, then it's just going to, you know, it's going to waste away. So if she goes to Ring of Honor and, and wrestles Athena, great. But, you know, make it into a special mm-hmm. program. So I you want to see more of a story for Julia just beyond her being this violent, unhinged kind of crazy person is what you're telling me. Yeah, and I think that's what made the Anna Jay feud pretty good. I mean, it was short lived, right? It was about a month. Feud, well, I, but it might not be over, but you're right. It, it has it, it did kind of have a finish that was like, uh Okay, I guess for, you know, Julia, but this kind of sucks for Anna. Brent, uh, Julia Hart, how do you feel about her? What would you like to see her do? Are you on the Julia train? I'm I'm on the Julia Hart train. 
I liked her since she was on the sideline with the varsity what blondes. Uh, there, there, there were the varsity blondes. Then they were just the blondes yeah. because they were the, the varsity athletes came in and they didn't want to rip off their gimmick. Um, and then, and then what's his name got injured. So and then Griff Garrison huge. got injured. So now it's just Pillman. Yeah. Well, Pillman and Brock Anderson right now. Yeah. Whatever they are. Um, I, I think that feud's not over yet. I, I think it's going to go to DON, but it might be one of the opener like matches, if anything. But like before free, I kick you know, it, like, yeah, you're right. Free matches in a sense. It's gonna be like like uh, one of the buy-in matches or something uh, like that. Yeah, I mean, I and like you're saying with Jade, you know, it's just like you better you get you gotta give her better competition than just jobbers and the match lasting more than five minutes. Like that Taya Valk- Valkyrie one was like that. That match should have gone on a little longer. Yeah, they mm-hmm. that there was real potential there for a good feud between the two of them. Because Ty Valkyrie is yeah. every bit as stout as Jade Cargill. I I just think that match should not have just ended with a pin. You know, no. it just well, been one of those. I want to matches before I kick like, it back oh, to Kelson here. You know. Yeah, before I kick it back to Kelson here, I do just want to say, I just want to offer this perspective, and I feel like I have to offer this sometimes because those of us who are a little more, I, I guess, want to say insightful, maybe about the wrestling business. I don't want to say smart because I don't think any of us are really smart, pal. But um. It's easy for us to sit here and say, yeah, we don't love Jade's angle, but I'm going to tell you something, pal. She gets pops in those arenas. The normal, average Joe Schmo wrestling fan loves Jade Cargill. Now, that doesn't mean she needs to continue to be the TBS champion, but I, it's not just... When Tony Khan's making these decisions about how to book people, he's not just listening to these kind of podcasts. He has to look about who's selling merchandise, who's getting reactions from the crowd who's getting media attention outside of aw and jay gets all those things now is it time for her to let go of that belt yes but let's not sit here and act like it's a bad thing that jade cargill is is on tony khan's good side in terms of who he wants to push because she has appeal she has very very broad appeal and they just need to get her into a more interesting story. And I think she's going to take off Kelson back to you. No, I agree with you there that, uh, you know, and again, it goes back. It ultimately goes back to ratings, you know, and I brought this up last week, uh, after the match that Jade had against the jobber last, you know, whatever. I can't even remember when she had her last match. Uh, a all elite wrestling made a tweet saying congratulations on what well, it is a 57 and 0 for Jade Cargill. I, it's so uninteresting that I don't even know how many wins she's got now. And I think I shared this with everybody after AEW made that tweet on their official Twitter account out of the first 90 replies, 88 of them, and I counted them. I went through them. Each one were negative saying boring, take the belt off of her, you know, that kind of stuff. There were two positive replies. One said something to the effect of Jade is my champion, which you can't get more positive than that. And the other one was she's so hot or she's so fine is what it was. Yeah. I just ignore so, Those are nothing comments. Those don't mean anything. <laughs> so, you know, so I, you know, you kind of have to read the room and it, and it, that it's not a slight against Jade again. Well, is Twitter the room though? That's what I'm saying. I don't think Twitter accounts as the whole room. Yeah. But anybody you go and you go anywhere and talk about Jade. Really oh, I know. I know. Very extremely, you know, and it's not against Jade. It's against Tony Khan. It's Tony Khan has done a really horrible job of booking Jade Cargill to the point where, He's uninteresting. I mean, you see Jade Cargill. I mean, every time Jade Cargill wrestles a match, people are saying, well, there there was my bathroom break. Thank you. Yeah. You know, let's not watch the match. Let's move on because we really were talking about Julia. But we did sort of detour into Jade here because they're that's sort of a program that people think that Julia should slot into. So but I will expand on that last point just to say that in general, I think A.W., and Tony Khan have done a pretty miserable job of booking the women by and large. 
outside of Britt Baker. And if you don't like Britt Baker, you probably didn't enjoy that title run either. So with that said, we have let's go ahead and move into our dynamite preview for tomorrow. And the first match I want to talk about is a match that we're hopefully going to finally get some movement on the women's side in this major story. Uh, Jamie Hayter, the women's world champion, who is not even front and center on the graphic. I, hilarious to me. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD and Hikaru Shida are going to take on the outcasts, Ruby Soho, Soraya and Tony Storm. We're going to have a final confrontation. Kelson. Let's hear your thoughts on this match. Who do you think is going to win? And also, I don't know. You can tell us what bonus prediction you might have for this week. It's probably one. I don't know if it's for this match, but go ahead. Uh, I, I haven't actually thought of the bonus prediction. I'll probably think of it as we're talking. But anyway, going through this outcast versus the homegrowns, I'm going with the outcast on this one. I don't see, you know, any kind of positive vibes coming from the homegrown still. I mean, frankly, what I think is going to happen is the homegrowns are going to come out, the three of them, and eventually, and so will the the uh, outcast. But, but at some point, somebody's going to come through that curtain or come through that tunnel on the side of the outcast to kind of make up for what happened last week with, with Sheeta or two weeks ago with Sheeta. And I think once again, the outcast will outsmart the homegrowns, get the win and move on from there. And frankly speaking, and I'm going to throw something out here as not a prediction, but as a, uh, as food for thought, frankly speaking, I would love and this goes back to what we were just talking about. I would love for the new member of the outcast to be the ultimate AEW outcast right now. And that is Jade Cargill. I don't believe that she's going to be a homegrown. If anything, she would be a outcast and would actually better serve her. Well, if Jade has, if Jade has green hair tomorrow, that'll be interesting. That so, will be interesting. Um, I'll go ahead and give my prediction. I also think the outcast is going to win because there's no way they can't if they want to keep the story going. Um, I also think we're going to have a, another debut tomorrow. Cause I think I, I saw this on Twitter and I wish I could credit the person who said it. Cause I think it's one of the, that's one of the most succinct ways to put what's happening right now. This is the AEW counter offensive. A, like WWE had a great few months under triple H and they kind of pulled the head in the ratings. And everybody was like, oh, my God, AEW. And now AEW's like, all right, how's it looking Stanford now? Oh, by the way, we just sold 65,000 tickets for London with no card. We put on one of the best shows we've ever done last week. And we're, we're going to do something else this week, too. That's what this feels like. So with that said, could we see Mercedes Monet tomorrow? How do you feel about that, Wolf? I would be shocked. I don't think that she would debut tomorrow but you know with this special announcement you know that more eyes are going to be on the pro you know on the show so i would be shocked um as for my prediction i'm also going outcasts for every you know all the same reasons i don't see how homegrowns can win this match and for this storyline to carry into all um excuse me double or nothing i mean we still don't even have a card for double or nothing we have no idea what we're building towards and this, uh, this is one of my gripes. <laughs> you know, I want to know where this is going. And, yeah. And you know, it was hot for that one week when, you know, with that angle with Jericho, <clears throat> excuse me. And that was great. But then they kind of just like, you know, two weeks have passed. They haven't really done anything else with JAS and the outcasts, like allegiance there. So I don't know, man. I, I'm going outcasts and um, that's all I got to say, I guess. <laughs> all right, Brent, who you got? Ah, well, let's see. For this event, I am going to go with DMD. Uh, oh, so you're taking the homegrowns. You're taking DMD, Jamie Hayter, and Sheeta. For the wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Or this has people come out in mass that, you know, for the girls, for the outcasts that you want Ladies, won't know. these are women, guys. Ladies, please. La ladies, women. <laughs> you gotta do like the outsiders and people come out in masks that you don't know who they are gonna be to 
maybe Dio <laughs> Anna down the road, or they take him off right away. <laughs> I don't know. Rollins, you know. Uh, who do you think is going to win this match tomorrow? Uh, the Outcasts or the Homegrowns? I got the homegrown talents winning, and I'll tell you why. Soraya won last week um, against Willow Nightingale. You had Ruby Soho get a win recently. I think that was against Sky Blue. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like the Outcasts have been picking up a lot of wins. So I feel like the only way to keep the story going is for the homegrowns to win this match. Well, now that's an interesting perspective. I hadn't thought of that. Shane, what about you? Who you got in this match? Um, yeah, I got the homegrowns too. To be honest with you, wow. uh, and split. in that's terms good. of, uh, and, and and in terms of growing the story, why do we want to continue to grow the story? It's been the same program for almost two months now. Well, that's a good if question. Not, uh, why we, why don't we get some variety? Why don't we get some recruiting, pick up some new members? I don't think Mo- we're going to see Monet until Forbidden Door. Let's be real for a second. But I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, let, let's let's get some other talents from the locker room out here. Front face, Riho, Nyla Rose. Maybe Athena. Just, uh, the, well, why oh would God, Athena, Athena need to? Well, I mean, Athena Athena's doesn't need to break ass on her own right now. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. I. I, I she's I, an outcast. I, she is an outcast, but she's been an outcast since day one, whooping ass and taking that drop kicking women across the floor for for almost a year she's and a half. Her life right now. That's yeah, she's it. yeah, man. Would, let let her keep doing her, man. But like, uh, we, if we don't you not want to see her in a program though with Britt and Jamie Hader. Oh, and it's coming. Hader. They just gotta. They're just, they're just letting Athena do her thing in Ring of Honor for a little while. She's coming. They just gotta wait for somebody else to get in Ring of Honor who can carry that belt. Like that's the only reason she still has it is because. Go ahead, Shane. I'm sorry. I would have given. Oh, no, no, go, go ahead. Finish. Blue. Yeah. I was no, just saying, no, like that's the reason. Like it's like it's not. They're trying to build up someone like Sky Blue who can actually carry that belt, so that Athena can get out of Ring of Honor and get into AEW where she belongs at the top of the card. If, See, I, if, I, if I'm I, booking it, if TK. See, I agree with you there, but I think you could continue the program between Athena and Sky Blue because even though they had their championship match last week, I don't think that program is over. But I don't why either. not try in? Why not try and put both of them in this outcast? Sure, let's do it. Storyline. I don't hate the idea, Shane. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? Sky Sorry Blue. for interrupting if I was. Absolutely. I have a tendency of doing that. Nothing to apologize for. Nah, man. Sky Blue is a, the Billy Gunn of the Attitude era, era. She signed All Elite two months ago. Her only job is to be used to put other people over. If they were going to run a relevant program with Sky Blue, Tony Khan would stop putting her on national TV and making her lose and then letting her win again on Dark to balance the scales. And that's not an actual balancing of the scales. They need to bring someone fresh into this program or it's going to fizzle out like a bad fart. And you know what? It doesn't yeah. matter who... It doesn't matter who wins tomorrow, whether the outcasts win or whether the the uh, the homegrowns win. If they don't do something different, this program is going to be dead in the water before the pay-per-view. Well, let's talk about yep. something that's not going to fizzle like a wet fart tomorrow or be dead in the water. It's probably going to be one of the most charged segments of the whole show, and that's going to be uh, we're going to hear from Don Callis. Don Callis. I thought you were going to say the match between Ricky Starks and Jay White. No. That's the match I'm most excited for. Well, we'll get to that, but I want to talk about this Don Callis segment because um, the the sort of scuttlebutts out there that Will Ospreay's been booked for All In and Don Callis changed his Twitter profile with some Ospreay-esque language. So... Do you think I don't know that we're going to see Osprey tomorrow, but Kelson, do you think we might see maybe Aussie Open come out with Don Callis? No, I no. don't. I think I think if AEW was smart, they would keep it simple with Don Callis right now. And if anybody confronts Don Callis, it should be Kenny Omega, and just let them go face to face and see what's said and done. 
But he, no. Kenny's going to beat the shit out of Don if that happens. Don's got to have somebody to watch his back. Well, you may have somebody watch his back, but I don't want to see Don Callis quote unquote come out with Aussie Open. That's I fair. Want to, I want it to mean something. You know, that's the whole point of the, you know, even the last match we were talking about. It's got to mean something. That's my biggest worry with this card is that there's so many things that could happen. But is it going to mean something? Well, I highly that, doubt that this segment's not going to mean anything because they've they've been this is one of the this is one of their bread and butter stories right now. And everybody's invested. So, well, um, I'm going to disagree with you. Well, there almost because, everybody, I guess. So go ahead. I am not invested. I am invested in Kenny Omega. I really of all the segments in on the show tomorrow. I'm not, I, you know, I don't really care about Don Callis. I really don't. And it's not anything about Don Callis as a, you know, as a talent. It's just, it's just so random and, you know, whatever. I, I just, I'm just not, I mean, frankly, you're, I disagree with you. I'm seeing nobody talking about this whole Don Callis thing. Where, you know, because I guess it's because I'm just not interested in it. That's uh, that's interesting. Like, I feel like that's all I've been saying. Uh, Wolf, what's your take on what we might see from Don tomorrow? Sorry, Kelson, I completely disagree with you. I think based off of last week, this angle is hotter than ever. I mean, they ended the show with Callus betraying Kenny Omega. They have to, you know, this this. Uh, this segment has to offer an explanation other than just like, you know, something, some fluff. You gotta, you gotta tell us why he did it. Yeah. And I will I say think, this for just kind of for Kelson. Like if Don comes out here and lays an egg, that's going to really be bad for this program. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead, Wolf. Interested about something that hasn't happened yet. You know, it's, I mean, what happened on with Kenny Omega on dynamite last week, is a wrestling angle. The angle has a, is the beginning of a wrestling angle. If they don't come through tomorrow night, then, then it's dead in the water. That's I mean, a, that's a fair point. I think yeah. Shane, I, you, you seem like you have something you want to chime in here. So go ahead. Tony Khan expects people to know the context in the relationship between Aussie open Kenny Omega and what's going on with the betrayal um in terms of osprey specifically you like like all of this started at wrestle kingdom and there was dissonance between omega and callus subtly during uh the post of that event um and that that's at tony khan's fault you can't just expect people who are not exposed to that that media to know you know the nuance of what happens over there. They're building Omega versus Osprey, the IWGP USA title. Um, but I agree with, I see where Kelson's coming from. Like, we don't know. How are we supposed to know until he says something, right? It's, it, it is undercooked. Um, Has AEW same- not done a good job highlighting the length and the depth of the relationship between Don Callis and Kenny Omega? It's an, that uh, I would say that's correct. Uh, that that's a twelve-year relationship that they've only touched up on. It's well, we'll look at uh, uh, just to to give an example. Look at Cutler and Nakazawa. Well, what were they to Kenny Omega and the Elite three years ago during the initial All In? Nakazawa was the dude that put baby oil all over himself, and Brandon Cutler used to wear red tight uh, red tights and actually be a professional wrestler. And they uh, miraculously overnight, they're just all members of the Elite. So they kind of just plop Don Callis in there. Now, if you watch New Japan, you know that Don Callis has a gigantic presence in all of this with the Golden Elite and the Golden Lovers and all of that. So what I think is going to happen, and this is all I have, that uh, this is the rest of I, that I have to say on it, that Don Callis is going to be a platform to not only bring uh, Osprey over to AEW, but also Kota Ibushi back into the Elite. That's my opinion. All right, Rollins, what 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 are your thoughts on Don and how they've sort of told the story so far? So I don't watch New Japan, so I don't know the extent of the relationship between Don Callis and Kenny Omega. However, I did 
I have been watching AEW for a while, so I've been able to see their relationship from that perspective. Um, and that's why, even though, like, I don't know the extent of the relationship, it still got a huge reaction from me when Callis did what he did last week. But with Don Callis doing this, do you guys think that it takes the focus off of this feud between the Black Cool Combat Club and the Elite? Uh, Brent, go I ahead. Why don't like you start does. and answer that question? Why don't you start with that answer, Brent? Uh, I think this is still continuing for at least another month <laughs> with the Black. Yeah, Black but do you Pool think Country the Dawn Betrayal, and... do you think that has to do with the Blackpool Combat Club, or do you think it's more Osprey-focused? Because if it's more Osprey-focused, or is Osprey <laughs> going to join the Blackpool? Because he's got his own faction, you know? Yeah, it's, it, it could be 50-50, or you go in, do like a Blood and Guts and Osprey teams with, or they have him as an extra member in the Blackpool Country Club. Because, right, that's five on five. Do they play cricket at the Blackpool Country Club? Type type of thing. He's a valued member of the Blackpool Country Club. You don't finish it, but then you have Osprey and Omega go to Forbidden Door. There's so much. There's there's a lot of moving pieces around it. Or 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 you're keeping the Will Osprey angle for Orange Cassidy because of last week and Kyle Fletcher. Uh, We haven't even thought about that with Orange Cassidy. So you're kind of like ignoring that side, I guess. Well, I'm not ignoring it. We just haven't got to it yet. Or, or, it's not yeah, on this card. Know. Let's put it that way, because we're looking at the dynamite yeah. card for tomorrow. I still think Don Callis is going. They're going to have him with BCC. BCC. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes more sense to me in a sense. They need their William Regal, even if Don Callis is kind of annoying. Yeah. Kind of just he's he doesn't come off as like a manager like that I can be annoyed at all the time. Like I love he did a great job like, when he was the guy open, from the uh, embassy and uh what's it what's his prince prince what's his name? From, prince from Nana and Prince Nana, yes. Or Prince Nana's amazing. I love Prince Nana. Or Stokely Hathaway or um, yeah, I think Mar- Don's a unique Mark. talent, yeah, these, these and they've not been presented always I, the best in AEW. That's for these sure. managers make me feel like I'm watching like back in the day, like the managers WCW or WWE mm-hmm. would have had. Yeah, I just wish someone had a tennis racket somehow. Don's a different cat. A Hart, that's true. Or, or or a Jimmy Hart jacket, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's move on from this segment. Let's talk about some actual wrestling that's going to happen tomorrow. But I don't know how much actual wrestling will happen. Uh, Sammy Guevara is going to be in action. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't see it on the card here, but I think I saw on Twitter today that Ty Mello is going to also be in action. Did I hear that right, Kelson? Uh, no. No? No, I, I, that, uh, I think I know the Twitter post you're talking about it and in no way said that Ty Mello was going to be in action. Okay. All right. So that's, that's, see, that's what I'm saying. It's like, so we're, we're, Sammy is definitely going to be in action though, uh, which yeah. is sort of code for he's going to beat somebody. I don't know who. Um, Austin Jobber. Austin Jobber. Maybe. He's I don't know. So yay for Sammy, who's going to wrestle. Um, but I don't think that's where the pillar action is going to happen tomorrow. I think the pillar action is going to happen tomorrow. In the match between Jungle Boy Jack Perry and LFI's Roosh, which I uh, admittedly am a little conflicted about this match because I love Roosh and he does not need to be losing to Jack Perry after he took Brian Danielson to the absolute limit. So, Kelson, with that said, who you got in this match? Okay, there's two things. First of all, can I go ahead and write Sammy next to for everybody's picks? For in, in, uh, yes. Yeah. We all pick yeah. Sammy Guevara. Sorry. You don't have a choice. You don't even, don't even chime in because you're muted. You, we can't, you can't select an opponent that's not on the card. So <laughs> if Sammy, Sammy loses to Austin Jobber. Can we pick who the, the Jobber could be? Could but that's be our bonus pick for the week. How about that? We all select who Sammy's opponent's going to be. <laughs> I will say it's going to be before we move on to Jack and Roosh. I'll say it's going to be um, pretty Peter Avalon. 
Kelson, who do you think is going to fight? It's not going to be anybody on the AEW roster. Have you don't you think it's going to be on the roster? No, it's going to be a homegrown from Austin that's going to be out there to get their absolute So you spot. think it's actually going to be a local enhancement talent is what you're saying? It's going to be a local enhancement talent that probably none of us have ever heard of before in our lives. All right, well, that's a fair selection. All right, Brent, who do you think Sammy's going to beat up on tomorrow? That, that is a good thought. Isn't it? Didn't Sammy come up in Austin from his wrestling yeah. time? Yeah. Who do you think he's going to so fight? Though? Maybe somebody he picks that he wants. Oh, he's going to pick somebody. It could, okay. be, it could be like an Action Andretti, though, too. Action Andretti. Okay. That's well, that I, um, Brent, who do you think Sammy might beat up on tomorrow? You just talked to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Brent, uh, Shane. Uh, hopefully it's Hollywood hunk. <laughs> I Ryan like this. Nemeth. I always, Ryan Nemeth. I always like go. to see Ryan. I always like to see Ryan Nemeth get beat up for some odd reason. It's kind of a shtick now. Um, mm-hmm. if you were following the Jericho cruise last year, I just keep getting picked up, get beaten up. Well, that's two, um, uh, it's two wingmen. We've, we've picked now pretty, <laughs> uh, we just need to get, uh, who else we need to get involved here? Who's the other wingman? I don't even know his name. <laughs> that Sorry. mustache guy. He's Sorry, got a mustache. Guy. The um, big guy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, what about you, Wolf? Who do you think Sammy might pin tomorrow? I'm going to say either Bandito or Commander. God damn. These guys Wait, need to get a damn win. win. <laughs> Come on. Ah. I think um, they, if it was Bandito or Commander, they would have announced that. I'm, I'm going to be real mad if it's one of them. Uh, all right. right. Rollins, who do you think Sammy's going to beat up on tomorrow? First of all, I don't think it's going to be Action Andretti because they've already done that match like twice and that program is seemingly over. Okay. But but I'm just going to go with the local enhancement. Lo- local enhancement talent. Art, all right. Art, smart. You just got that question right, Rollins. All right. Well, let's move okay. on to a real wrestling match now. Okay. So Shades, you just said that, you know, that you like Roosh and he shouldn't lose to Jack Perry. I agree with you, you know, because Roosh doesn't, it doesn't it, losing to Jack Perry, Perry doesn't do anything for Roosh at all. It actually, and it, and it does very little for Jack Perry. Yeah. And it does very, that's exactly what I was going to say is that it doesn't do anything for Jack Perry either. Uh, but Jack Perry is going to win this match. However, I kind of think that, Maybe MJF uh, may have paid off LFI to come in and maybe uh, screw with this match a little bit. You never know. It's a very I mean, MJF it's, thing to do. It, it's a very, yeah, it's a very MJF thing to do. So, yeah. Uh, let's mean, go to Brent. Who do you got, Roosh or Jack Perry? Uh, I'm going to go with Jack Perry. And what I said to Kelson earlier is, this Sammy match and the Jack Perry match are kind of like pointless to even put on the card because we should know who's going to win the match. And like you're saying, MJF has Van- Vance and uh, the manager come out. and I mean, that could be who Sammy's playing is, or is fighting is Vance. What's his name? Preston Ken. Vance. <laughs> yeah. Preston Vance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rollins, who you got, Roosh or Jack Perry? First of all, I like that they're calling him by Jack Perry and not Jungle Boy. I like that too. Um, yeah, it to me it makes him sound more like a badass. Um, and also, I love his submission, the snare trap. I've seen barely anybody ever like survive that, but. Yeah, I don't think Roosh should be the one losing this match, which he's going to, but you could have put somebody else in here. Roosh, I think, should be in a legit feud right now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm mystified. Sort of a, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, Shane, Jack Perry or Roosh? I want Roosh. We all know it's going to be Jungle Boy. Wolf, what about you? We're going to try to get through these a little faster because we're buttoned up against an hour here already. Oh, it's like the worst time to forget how to unmute. Sorry, uh, Perry. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm taking Roosh. And I think what's going to happen is LFI is going to try to interfere. Darby's going to come down to try to help, quote unquote, help Jack and accidentally clock him or something, cost him the match, add some juice to that little angle between those two and just add a little more conflict. And then Roosh gets to win and Jack doesn't lose anything. That would be how I would book this. Would I be surprised if Jack Perry wins? No, but I'm taking Roosh. So let's move on to Ricky Starks and Jay White. Uh, Rollins, you said you were looking forward to this match. So talk about it a little bit. Not too much, but uh, who you got? First of all, I'm really surprised this match is not happening at double or nothing. I thought for sure that's what was going to happen. And I There's a chance it still could. From what I've heard, though, this is going to be the main event. But I've got Ricky winning this. And can I make a bonus prediction about Ricky? Just go right ahead, pal. Okay. I think we did the mini feud between MJF and Ricky Starks earlier. I think Ricky is going to be the one that takes down MJF at full gear. Wow, that's a spicy take. All right, you heard it here first. Ricky Starks, the next AEW champion. Uh, Shane, who you got, Ricky Starks or Jay White? Hey, you already know. You're taking Jay White. All right. Oh, Wolf. yes, I'm taking you. Why would I not take Jay White? He's a megastar. They would be shitting the bed in a monumental way to not put a face to Jay White in AEW. Come on now. Now, I like your take, Rollins, but come on, man. Like, Ricky Starks puts over talent on a regular basis. Wardlow, powerhouse. Well, uh, easy now. We're not. Everybody can, ha- everybody can have their opinion. Everybody yeah, can have their opinion. You're totally, I totally disagree with you. Like, Ricky I, just came off a huge win against Jericho at Revolution. They are clearly giving him a push, giving him a <laughs> huge win over Jay White. Think how much credibility that gives Ricky. I wow. love your opinion. I re- and I respect that. That would opinion. be so wild if it happens. I'll just say that. I, Ricky I don't, needs the win more than Jay White needs it. Uh, I don't know about that. I, I mean, don't know. In terms- All right, Kelson, what do you got? Let's just not get into too much of a conflict here. Kelson, who you got in this match? Oh, uh, you don't want to get into a conflict. I'm probably not the person to call on. Well, right just now, well, I- just make a pick. You don't have to. You don't have to spice up the t- the pot. Just make a pick. I'm going to abstain. Is I honestly? All right, you don't care about this I'll, match, I'll, so you're not interested I'll, in this match at all. Is what you're saying? I'll Jay, because he needs to win a lot more than Ricky because they just brought him in and it doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to bring somebody in and, and have him lose to somebody that he shouldn't lose to. Okay. So I'll, I'll go with Jay. All right. Uh, Brent, who you got Jay or Ricky? I pick Jay White because Ricky's on that winning streak for the year. Yeah. You can obviously pick him because he's like, what, seven and O or something now. Because of last week when y'all were picking Juice Robinson and, and thought it was crazy, I picked Ricky. Then, am I commuted? Okay, it is. <laughs> usually I get interrupted by now. No, so. no, I usually talk <laughs> over you is what happens. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that I get too excited. Um, but do we see something happen here? we we got to add to to the gold is the juice going to be loose you know, tomorrow and some other now? some other friends with ricky i don't know or, what do you think or, Wolf? or do we want to get a rematch with ricky for d-o-n and then we add more members i don't then. know let's what, what, what's you your know. take wolf i'm going jay white i don't think you bring in jay white and have him lose in his first match um and like Rollins, I'm completely surprised that this was left off of uh, double or nothing but hey if AEW wants to spoil us I'm not going to complain. Yeah. So, um, I'm taking Jay white. Cause I just think I'm not saying they won't have wiki Ricky win. I'm saying I would disagree with that booking if they did. So that's why I'm taking Jay. They could very well like Ricky hasn't lost this year. And it's interesting that th- there's a different opinion about Ricky Starks because my opinion about Ricky Starks is that yes he had that major major win against Chris Jericho at Revolution huge win and then he comes out the next night or Wednesday and gets punked out by Juice Robinson on live television and it just takes all this heat away that's how I saw it 
And it seems like that Ricky has really been on the ass end of this whole angle from start to finish. And so I, I, I don't know. We're going to see. But let's move on to. I guess there's only one match left on the card, right? So there's Chris Jericho and Roderick yep. Strong. Right. No, uh, that's going to be false count anywhere. I get lost in some of these stipulations sometimes. Also, are we doing too many stipulations? I feel like we need to back off on the steps a little bit. Like we had a cage match and a no holds barred match last week. And now we've got a falls count anywhere match. And I'm just Don't like, double <laughs> and double. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got lots of gimmicks going on and I just, you know, are we going to do the tuxedo coal miner on a glove on a pole cage match that Jake and Ted DiBiase had? All those years or hers. Ted DiBiase had it with somebody. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to make my pick. I'm going to take Chris Jericho because I think Jericho needs to, a little more sauce in this feud just to really twist the screw a little bit more and get Adam Cole really fired up. Uh, Kelson, what do you think? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I really don't feel that there's going to be a result in this match, but I'm going to go ahead and pick Jericho. I mean, you can't have a match, a double or nothing between Cole and Jericho with, with Jericho losing to Cole's yep. friend. Yep. I mean, it just, that just doesn't make any sense. It, so, so frankly, I really kind of hope that this doesn't have a clean ending and that it is kind of like an open-ended kind of match. All right, Rollins, who you got? Jericho or Roderick Strong? Yeah, I think it's got to be Jericho, which, um, first of all, this feud, along with the previous feud that we were talking about, Ricky Starks versus Jay White, those have been my two favorite feuds post-Revolution, um, especially Jericho versus Cole. I am so but happy he, to hear a different take in here because I don't think any of us have really liked any of the. Well, I think we like Adam Cole as like a wrestler, but... and. But I think the Starks thing for sure. But it's really interesting that those are what you liked. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Well, to be frank with you, I've always been a huge fan of Ricky Starks, even when he was part of Team Taz. Like, for some reason, there was just something yeah. about him that I'm like, yeah, I let's move really to the Jericho like thing, guy. though. So so we're, you're taking Jericho and you really like yes. this angle. Yes, I do. OK. All right. Shane, who you got? Jericho or Starks? I'm sorry, Jericho or strong or, or strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah Jericho goes. Strong. Yeah. Jericho. Cause Jericho always wins. Uh, my guess is uh, Jericho appreciation society involvement in the late game. And then we get Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby fish back tonight. All right. Uh, Brent Jericho or strong. I picked Roddy strong and I'm sticking to it just All because right. he hasn't actually had a match in here. But like Kelson said, I don't, I just don't see the match actually ending because Adam. No Cole contest is down. a selection. You can pick no contest. I, I guess you could say no contest, but it, if there wasn't no contest, I just want Roderick Strong because he's coming in. He's brand new. It's kind of like the Jay White thing. All right, so he hasn't, you're gonna... no, no, he hasn't had no matches where he just won me like three in a row or something. You know, dark right. ended, so he's gonna have dark matches. <laughs> All right, so you're taking Roderick Strong. Wolf, who you got, Jericho or Strong? I have Chris Jericho. <clears throat> I will say this, though. Um, if oh, let's take Chris Jericho. Return, <laughs> undisputed Elite return, um, I really hope it's not after the match because that really just doesn't make any sense. Like, I can't stand it when, like, there's interference that costs the one guy a match, and then after they lose, here comes the help. What could be... But, what could really serve the sort of the no contest thing that maybe Kelson and, and Brent would like to see is if, and this is sort of, sort of how I started to book it last week. So this is a no holds. I'm sorry. This is a false count inter, anywhere match. That means Adam Cole is barred from the arena, but he's not barred from the parking lot. So let's say Roger Strong takes Jericho out to the parking lot. Well, JS is also not barred from the arena or, you know, so, or from the parking lot. So they show up and then it's a, it's a brawl. And then, you get Fish and O'Reilly. And it's just a big uh, cluster outside the arena in the parking lot. There's no result. It's this just mass, massive, like, sea of humanity brawl. Okay? That could be fine. Um, but I'm taking Chris Jericho. <laughs> um, so we all took Jericho. I think that's it for this card. 
Um, oh, we did that a year ago. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Brent took Roderick Strong. That's right. Well, you might gain out. You're going to gain. You'll gain some uh, ranking in the standings in the picks. If if you come out on top on this one, because you, we you are the only one on the Roderick Strong Island. Um, yeah. I think I'm the only one on the Ricky Starks Island. You are, reason. friend. And um, it's not because we want that to be Ricky's fate. It's just because it's just what it seems to be. So <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. I'm a I love Ricky Starks. And will I, they throw in another match? <laughs> uh, we're going to get another match. I don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to get something. We, we might see Darby Allen in action. Right. We've got Sammy. We've got Jack. And if let's say let's say Darby comes out and costs Jack his match. Well, if Darby's in action later, then maybe, you know, Jack comes out Darby and returns the favor. Rampage, yeah, right? yeah. Or something like that. So. All right. Well, I think that's the show by and large, unless anybody else has anything they're dying to throw out there that they want to talk about for tomorrow's dynamite. Well, the only thing that I could say is that of course we'll be talking about uh dynamite on, on a uh, all lead talk tomorrow night at 10 15 Eastern time here at, at the uh, discord uh, in the all lead talk channel. But of course we're going to be talking about the, all the information that was released about collision, the TV deal, streaming possibilities a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow yeah i imagine all of our platforms are going to be really lively tomorrow you can find us on of course discord which is where we record this podcast that's discord.gg slash aew fans you can find us on reddit we're a um r slash aew fan hub uh, you can find us on twitter we're aew fan hub on twitter and we also are aew fan hub on youtube so i imagine the reddit and our discord tomorrow will be full of conversation about sort of the, the details that are leaking out and we'd love to have you join us. So, uh, for, uh, Hulk and Brent Wolf 82, Shane and absolute Rollins. I'm shades of the vibe. And this is Kelson. Good night, everybody. Good night.